This video introduces maximum likelihood estimation, which is a method for fitting models to data and uh, comparing those models to find the best one. We'll cover this topic in a fairly qualitative way. For more details, there are many good references, particularly the book um, by Burnham and Anderson on model selection and, and multi-model inference. So if you really want to know more, particularly about the mathematical end of things, I would definitely recommend that reference. So to introduce the concept of likelihood, let's first think about probability, which you've heard about before in this class. So for probability, we can assume that we know something about the underlying reality, or the true model, or, or, the, or the overall population, for example. We can then ask, what is the chance of observing this particular data, or sample, given that known reality? So for example, if the true population of quartz, or the true proportion of quartz is 0.2, what is the chance, or what is the probability, of finding 32% in one particular sample? Or likewise, if grain size has a normal distribution with some known mean, mu, and some known standard deviation sigma, what is the chance, or what is the probability, of observing some set of data x? Likelihood is just the reverse process. So for likelihood, we want to ask, given some observed data, what is the chance that a given reality or a given model is true? So thinking about this in the reverse way, if we counted 32% quartz grains in a sample, what is the chance or what is the likelihood that the true proportion is 0.2? Or if we observe some data x, what is what are the best normal distribution parameters mu for the mean and sigma for the standard deviation to describe that distribution? So that's likelihood. So maximum likelihood estimation has two goals. First, it determines the best model parameters, the most likely reality that fits a given set of data. So this is the likelihood part. We want to find the most likely parameters, the most likely reality or model for the given set of data. And second, it's typically used to compare multiple models to determine which of those is the most likely explanation or the best fit for the data. To do that, it maximizes something called the log likelihood function to estimate the model parameters, and then uses concepts from information theory to compare the model fits. So I'll discuss each of these steps in a bit more detail, uh, starting with the likelihood function. So let's take an example. Let's say we have some data like this histogram here, or they're like asteroid sizes or something like that. Um, we maybe want to know if it's best fit by statistical distribution A or statistical distribution B. And so I'm not going to cover distributions in this course, but so there's a lot of them. Um, different ones apply in different circumstances. So basically, by fitting a particular distribution and knowing that a particular distribution is the best fit for this data, we can learn something about the underlying processes. Okay, so if we start by thinking about probability. Let's say we assume that we know the distribution. We can describe the probability of observing the data. So this function here is the way that you read these sort of things with this conditional probability is that it's the probability of observing the data, x1, x2, and so forth, given that they come from a distribution with parameters theta. So the vertical bar between the x's and the theta basically means that the probability of observing the x's is conditional upon the theta being true. So given the way that conditional probabilities work, um, we can also treat this as the probability of observing x1 given the parameters, multiplied by the probability of observing x2 conditional upon those parameters, and so forth. So in other words, we get the product, that capital pi symbol, of the probability of observing each data point given the parameters. But remember that likelihood is just the reverse of probability. So to get our likelihood function, we can define it this way. So this equation here states that the likelihood of the true parameters being some values theta, given the observed data x, is the same thing, or is equal to, the probability of observing the data x given some true parameter values. So what we want to do is we want to find the most likely parameter values given the data, but it turns out that maximizing the likelihood function is difficult, so what we're going to do is we're going to maximize the log likelihood function instead. 
And so by taking the logarithm, we can get rid of the pr product symbol capital pi or big pi there and instead use a sum. So we're basically just going to get the log likelihood, so that log L, so that the likelihood of the parameters being true given the data is the same thing as the sum of the log probabilities of the data being true given the parameters. So the graph here shows the log likelihood, blue or lower values, red or higher values for likelihood. Um, and it's determined at each point in the graph by calculating the probability of observing the data given that particular mean and standard deviation. So we can say, okay, if the mean was 1 and the standard deviation is 2, or sorry, 0.2, what is the probability of observing the data? And that's our likelihood for that those parameters being true. And then we can say, okay, let's say the mean is 1.1 and the standard deviation is 0.2. What's the probability of observing the data? And that's our likelihood for that point. So the black dot shows the mean and standard deviation that you would calculate from the actual data. It's also the maximum likelihood estimation uh, point of this likelihood function too. So the maximum likelihood parameter estimate is exactly what you would calculate if you just used the raw actual data. So you might be wondering at this point, like what is the point of all this? Like, you know, if we can just get this v value from the data, why do we need to go through this whole process about finding the likelihood function and maximizing it and so forth? Well, the real strength of this method is the ability to compare multiple models to find the one that is most likely of those given the data. Right, so the maximum likelihood estimate is basically what you would just calculate from the raw data anyways, but to be able to compare them, we need to use information theory methods um, which are fairly complicated, so I'll describe them in, in general terms. Okay, so there's something in information theory called the kullback leibler information. And it basically just quantifies the amount of information lost when some probability density function, which we'll call G, is used to approximate model F. And F is also some probability distribution function. So this is the equation that they give for this. Model G is evaluated over some parameter space theta, and then the function is integrated for continuous distributions at least over x. So just to, the details of this integral function aren't critical because it actually isn't going to be used. More generally, we actually really want to know which of our candidate models that we're looking at best describes the underlying truth, what's often called full reality. So f is actually full reality, it's not a model. Um, and G is one of our models. We're comparing multiple models to see how well they approximate full reality, and basically figuring out which one loses the least information when you're, when you're approximating reality. So full reality is, of course, not knowable. Um, so in practice, this equation is rewritten into a form so that full reality becomes a constant and drops out of the equation. I always find that kind of an amusing phrasing because it's, it's you know, reality is removed as a constant and you get this equation. But basically then by turning this into sort of a relative form, the models can be chosen on the basis of their relative distance from full reality. Okay, but the kullback leibler information turns out to be extremely difficult to calculate, even in a relative sense, for many different functions. But Japanese statistician um, Hirotugu Akaike um, showed that you could actually estimate this KL information from the maximum log likelihood. And so he created a value which he called an information criterion, or AIC, and which is now called the Akaike um, information criterion. So AIC is based on the maximum log likelihood in blue there. Theta with a little hat on it means that this is the maximum likelihood estimation point. That's the sort of the, the best parameters for that particular um, model. And he also incorporated the number of parameters, so the number of variables that you're using to fit this model, which he gave as k, or in, which is in red here. And so in this formulation here, smaller AIC values indicate a better fitting model because they have higher likelihood, likelihood is multiplied by minus 2, so bigger likelihood or bigger log likelihood gives you smaller AIC in the way this equation is written. So the k term then is often said to penalize more complex models, that is models that have more parameters.
So adding more parameters always increases the model fit and always gives you a higher log likelihood. However, more parameters also increase the uncertainty in the model prediction, for example, uh, because each parameter must itself be estimated from the data. And so therefore, there's some error on each estimate. And if you're making lots of estimates, you end up with lots more error on the overall fit of the model. So basically, AIC is a trade-off between bias. So like, is the model biased towards being lower or higher? Um, so bias is reduced when you have more parameters as the model should be a better fit. So that the trade-off between bias and variance or uncertainty, variance is increased with more parameters because there's more sources of uncertainty you have to fit more um, variables as you're doing your model. So relative differences between the AIC values for a variety of different models can be used to determine the best model of those candidates that you're looking at. But you can also convert the AIC values into something called Akaiki weights, uh, and they basically indicate the proportional support for each model. They'll sum up to 1 or to 100%. So in the example that I introduced at the beginning as sort of our test case here, model A, uh, which is the log normal incidentally, um, is the best model of the two. It has an Akaiki weight of 0.72. So notice that those two models sum up to one. So one gets 72% of the support, as we'll call it, and one gets 28%. So this gives you know relatively strong support for model A over model B, but there's no definitive cutoff in this sort of approach here. This is exploratory uh, statistics, and so you need to use your judgment to determine you know if this is really strong support for model A, or maybe maybe it's not. Maybe you're not as confident that A is better than B. Okay, so just to end with some warnings when you're performing model selection and using AIC. So both the likelihood values, the maximum likelihood values, log L, and the AIC values are only relevant when you're comparing them among models run on the same data. So you can't compare AIC on one data set to AIC on a different data set. It's just fundamentally not meaningful um, because the absolute AIC value is not important. The reason for this ultimately is that that Kolbeck Leibler distance or information is measured in a relative sense. And so because it's relative, the actual AIC value is not comparable across different data sets. Also, it, and this is quite important, to, to be aware that AIC is only telling you which of the models is the best candidate of the ones you used. So if you perform model selection on four separate models, it will happily tell you that one of those models is the best. But that doesn't actually mean that that model is itself necessarily good. It's just the best of the ones that you looked at. And so if you happen to choose four models that are all bad models, it'll tell you which one of those is the best bad model, but it might not be good in an absolute sense. And finally, uh, don't combine model selection with hypothesis testing. So if you use model selection to figure out which sort of which uh, combination of variables, for example, is the best explanation for your distribution, you shouldn't then do hypothesis testing and get a p-value because the significance that you would get will be inflated. Uh, you're examining multiple models and choosing the best, and that's the same thing as testing multiple hypotheses and reporting only the most significant, and you should never do that. So model selection and AIC are exploratory methods, which are valid methods to use, but you should never mix these exploratory with hypothesis testing approaches.